Welcome back everyone to another inventory series video and today I want to add a maximum stack amount for my items. So the first thing what I want to do is actually provide the information about what items uh, should have what kind of size the maximum amount. So I will go uh, first I will go to my structures the S inventory structure which contains all of the necessary parameters for my items and I'm gonna add a new variable over here and I'm gonna call this max amount and this will need to be a uh, regular integer and by default I will type in value 1 so that well I don't have to type in the values for the uh, items that maybe are not stackable and once we are done with this, we can save this and close this. Now let's go to our items database and let's actually set up some values. So for now, I'm going to do this only for the water, banana and medical box. I'm going to change the rest off screen. So for the water, let's say like 10. For the banana, let's make like 5. And for the medical boxes, let's say it's going to be 3. So we have those values set up, so it's all good. We can close that now and we can go to our third person character, which actually contains all of the necessary things that we need to make this happen. So the first thing that we need is let's 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 begin by going to our add items function. And over here you can see, well, first we try to add to the backpack and then we are looking for a stack. If we have a stack, then we add to that stack. Otherwise, we find an empty slot and add to that slot. What I want to do is instead of just finding any stack, I need to find a stack that can actually hold these items. So what I will do is simply copy, duplicate my find stack, pressing Ctrl W, and I'm going to call this find free stack. So find free stack. And inside of this function, well, we need to do some small changes. Over here, what we want to do instead of just simply getting the values, uh, from the row names, uh, we also want to get the items information. So I will get the data table row uh, of this specific row from this specific database. So let's connect those values. Row found goes straight into the loop. And for the out row, we want to make our S inventory structure. So we want to break the structure. And from this one, we need to get our maximum stack. I will move the return down a little bit, drag this in over here and let's adjust this a little bit. And now what we want to do is check if our maximum amount is smaller than a different amount. So let's reconnect this to the bottom and the top value is our current amount from the loop that we are receiving from this specific item. So let's connect the amount like so. There we go. And then we want to do a and check for whether if it, it is the same item, whether it's the same row name, and whether the current amount is smaller than the maximum amount. So let's do a AND boolean check, connect both of these conditions, and this is now our new condition for the branch. So that's going to be it for this function. Just make sure that on this data table row where we have the row not found, we also are going to our return node as well. So that just in case if we provide an incorrect item so that the return node would return us false. So now that we have this set up, we can go back to our add items function and instead of running the find stack, now we can run our find free stack. So I'm going to hold control, reconnect these pins right here, reconnect the execution, the success and the index as well, delete the previous node and move this into the, its previous location. So we are good with our add items function. Now we need to make some changes in our add item to player slot. So this is going to be a little bit interesting. So first, what I actually want to do instead of uh, simply just deleting everything, uh, it's good to keep some backups. Uh, so I will move these nodes down. So the um, input node itself setting the local variables. And then the next thing that we want to do is drag in our local variables. So our local item, we want to split this, then we can break this one as well to get the data table and the row then we can get the data table row itself so let's connect the execution right here connect the row name there we go so we are getting the items information then we want to get our s inventory structure so we want to break that 
And now we need to do a if branch check from our row found. And what we want to check for is the same thing that we first check, uh, were checking previously. And that is whether this specific slot is empty. So let's simply select all of these nodes right here. Let's drag those down and let's connect our empty value to here. So we are receiving our item, we are getting its information and we are checking whether it is whether this slot is empty. Now if it is empty then we want to do another if branch check and over here what we want to check for is whether our let's see so first let's get our local item let's split this because we need the uh, amount that we are trying to add and what we want to do is get our current amount so this one over here from the player slots we want to get the current amount and do a plus integer plus integer the current amount plus the amount that we want to add and then we can check whether this amount is smaller or equal to our maximum stack amount so max amount like so and then that can be our next if branch check now if this re returns true for us then what we can do is simply set the ri element set ri element the ri that we want to provide in this case is our inventories player slots because what well, we are adding to the player slots for the index we can use our local index value like so and for the item itself, we want to make this structure. So we are making this and what we need is we need to connect the local item and we need to connect the type. For the amount, we want to use our current amount plus the amount that we are providing. So it would look something like this. Um, if the slot is empty, then, well, this is going to return a zero and everything's gonna work fine. If it's not empty, it's gonna add those values together and still everything is going to be returned correctly. Now, at the end of this all, we want to return and we want to return true, success to be true, since, well, we were successful with adding these items. Now, if this branch returns false, then we also want to do a similar thing. We also want to set the RI element, but in this case, so first we, we are using the same uh, RI, so the player slots, we are using the same index, so our local index, but for the item itself, well, we want to make this slot structure. We can provide the same item so let's get our local item let's split that then we can provide our item information our type information but for the amount we want to use our maximum amount instead well because that is basically all that's allowed to be placed in that specific location then once we are setting that specific uh, slot to be filled to its maximum, we want to add the rest of the items as well. So what we will do is first set our local item because we need to change it up a little bit, remove a specific amount from it. So we need to make this. So let's make the slot structure. Then we can reconnect. So again, I'm going to drag another, another reference to the local item and I'm going to use the populate the item and the type values but for the amount what I want to do is get the current amount plus the local amount to be minus and I want to remove the maximum amount from this so for example let's say we have four items in the slot and we want to add 10 more maximum slot size is only 10 so together this plus this would be 14 so we are setting our slot to fill to 10 and then if we remove 14 minus 10 well we are left with the uh, 4 that uh, had no space so we can drag that in to the uh, this amount for the local item and once we are setting the new values for the local item we can run the function called find empty slot to find a new slot where we could add more items then we can do a if branch check to see if we were successful with finding uh, finding an empty slot and then we can rerun this same function with add uh, add item to player slot let's populate our inputs so the item is our local item and the index we want to use from this find empty slot like so then on uh, on the end at the end of this function we simply want to return and we want to return this return value from this success 
And then also here we have a branch with an empty false. From this false, we want to return false as well, since, well, we were not able to find an empty slot. Now we have one more if branch check that we haven't checked fully. So for this one, we are checking, that's the first if branch check where we are checking whether the, uh, this slot is empty. If this slot is not empty, what we want to do is do another if branch check over here from the true we can go up to the next if branch check like so so this is gonna reuse this ending part of the code quite nicely and for this one if the slot is already taken what we want to do is check for whether our current item that's in the slot so actually let me just simply copy this to have less routing i want to check if the local item so this one right here is equal to the item that we already have in the slot like so and another thing that I want to check for is I want to see if this item is stackable, so can stack. So from this one, I will do a and boolean check, like so, so whether we can stack and also whether those are the same items. And then that can be our branches condition. From the false, that means, well, we failed whether we can't stack it or it's not the same item, then that means that, well, we can return false uh, because we were unsuccessful with adding item to this slot. So now everything is set up. What we can do is simply delete all of this. So let's delete that. We no longer need it. Recompile, save this, and we are good with this function. So now, as of right now, this should only work with the player slots. So let's let's give this a try. Let me copy a couple of items in and then let's let's test this. Let's pick up some items. There we go. So it's no longer allowing me to add anymore. So let's see. Number three, number three. There we go. So we have stacked our items by three since that is the maximum amount for the medical boxes. Now we need to do the same thing basically for our backpack. So I will go to the inventories folder, open up my master backpack. Uh, quite a while ago, I received a question of why I'm copying all of the same functions from my third person character to my backpack. Well, mostly that is because I want to keep these two, two things separated uh, and I don't want to reuse functions from my third person character in case if I'm using my backpack for, for something else uh, so that the backpack wouldn't be dependent on the character. And that's exactly what we are doing with the chests the we are attaching a backpack to the chest and well it doesn't have a character so it's not able to access functions from our character so we need to do the same changes we just did in our character and we need to bring these to our backpack master as well to make life easier of course what I will do is simply first let's work on our find free stack what I will do is simply copy all of this except for the uh, first node itself, copy that, go to the backpack master, duplicate the find stack and rename this to find free stack, delete everything that's in the function and replace it with information from our character. There we go. So we have done that. And since in my case, the variables match up perfectly, I have the same names for the variables. I have the player slots, I have local found, local index and local amount. Everything pasted over just perfectly. If you have different names and let's say this is the inventory over here or whatever, and there it's player slots, make sure to replace these variables. So now find free stack is good. That means we can go to our add item and over here again, instead of running the find stack, we want to run our find free stack. So let's reconnect those values as well. There we go. There we go. There we go. We are all good with this. So we are now finding a free stack and then trying to add to the slot. Now we need to do a similar thing with our add item to slot. So I will go to the third person character, add item to player slot, copy all of this, go back to the backpack master, delete everything in here and repopulate this with these values and these functions from the characters. So this is the item. Let's make sure to reconnect the pins and this is the index. Then go over your function, make sure all of these nodes have colors because if you don't have this specific variable, whether it's gonna turn completely red or it's gonna be gray, uh, make sure you do plug in everything because, oh, there we go, as you can see, add item to player slot, it's completely red, this node is broken, that is because in this uh, backpack, I don't have a function called add item to player slot, I have a function called add item to slot. So make sure to replace that, you can hold control, reconnect these things, so the index, the item, and the 
boolean and another execution and as you can see well this node got completely destroyed then we can delete that for good and everything now should be working just fine so let's give this a go let's pick up a backpack let's pick up some items in our backpack as you can see i was able to pick up more items because i have a backpack but as you can see well still all of the items are getting stacked by three as well as they are supposed to for the medical boxes there we go so that's gonna be it for today's video now we can have a specific amount for specific items per stack uh, now we actually will have a couple of small issues with this if we want to consume uh, let's say from the crafting for example more than the maximum amount of items per stack well it's going to give us issues because well it's going to return us only one stack as of right now but uh, in the next video we are going to work on removing items function we're going to modify that quite a bit and also later on we are going to modify our crafting system as well so that we can use also our player slots and we could have uh, input so let me actually show you this because it's it's getting a little bit difficult for me to explain this let's say for our vest um, we want to have a recipe with multiple items um, right now if we would for example add let's add a new entry to this and let's say we find a item that is not stackable to make a military vest let's say we need to have the uh, battle axes which are not stackable and if I would type in let's say I need four of those this is not going to be able to be craftable because we cannot put four items in uh, these specific items in the same slot so like i mentioned in the future in the next few following videos we are going to work on this so that this thing would work as well and with changing our remove items function a little bit all of this will be possible so Thank you guys for watching, make sure you join my Discord, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, support me on Patreon, keep learning and I see you in the next video.